The yeah. Richard Moravi, <laughs> former governor of Laikipia County, the second governor of Laikipia <laughs> County, and uh, an economist, a former assistant minister, and an MSME development specialist, is our guest in the studio. He's here with the Honorable Member of Parliament for Kaharo Constituency, who is also the chairman of the Budget and Appropriations Committee of the National Assembly. They have just allowed Parliament to, uh, I mean, the national government to spend something to the tune of 3.6 trillion shillings <laughs> next year. And they've o said only. Only 3.6 trillion yeah. shillings and, and uh, for devolution, governor, to get an extra only 30 billion shillings in the next financial year and for the national government to get an extra 400 mm. <laughs> billion, only. billion only. Anyway, to continue the conversation here with us on <laughs> the country and what needs to be done and where the solutions lie, City, the day's proverbs of Adali. Yes, we are in the country of Kenya. Mm. I think you know where all that is, mm. East African coast. Because a man has injured your goat, you do not go and kill his bull. Because a man has injured your goat, <coughs> you do not go and kill his bull. Surely. Surely. But you know, Eric, mm. when you think about it, if we just move as aside from our... Take politics and move just a little bit away from it, huh? mm. And look at a certain reality. You know, we keep talking about the people of Kenya being central to everything, the constitution, Niao, God knows what. Now, take that statement and package it and look at the situation we find ourselves in. Mm. People vote. Okay? Let's yes. start with the election. Simple mm. process. Happened recently, you can remember it. Yes. Voting. All manner of people, MCAs, MPs, governors, Senators, so that they can delegated responsibility is what we call it, isn't it? Yes, mm -hmm. that's eh? that's people, mm -hmm. all right. Okay, then when these people have been elected, there are agencies, state departments, what have you. These people we've elected, we now delegate power to have them decide for us who these people will be, mm -hmm. who will be in government to help us do all these things that we do on a daily basis. Still, us, mm -hmm. we at the back of it, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. Then now, these same people, let's not get granular. Mm -hmm. So we have Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. There's a process that we go through when we appoint or we determine who is going to be in the Supreme Court. Mm. You know why? Brother Nidhi Nyoro here are among the people who sit and determine. <laughs> yes, they do. Mm. Whether someone's going to be a PS, a CS, Supreme Court judge, all these things, they, they determine. Mm. But that's us now because they're representing us. Mm. So we are the ones who have put those in power. Yes. Okay. Then you have a situation where we're now talking about demonstrations. Now, people come to the fore again. Mm -hmm. Now, you want to ask yourself, if indeed the people in their numbers determined who is to be the president of this country, if there is a demonstration called for and no one goes, the people will speak. If there's a demonstration called and people go, the people are again speaking. Mm. But what exactly are they saying? See, we cannot dismiss and say they are not saying something because they are. Mm -hmm. When we look at this country and what it entails, are we really addressing the issues? The plans this current government has, we've heard. Time, I agree, time must be given. But what are the issues that can be addressed today? Forget tomorrow and the day after. Today mm. and tomorrow. Because the future is really far. Tomorrow for some people is really far away. Today. What, in your opinion, CT, yes. are the issues that need to be addressed today? Uh, just hunger. Let's not go far with many things. Eh? Mm. Can people be assured that they're going to eat today? Okay. And I mean everybody. Today. Forget anything else. Today. First For of all, the today. Forget roads. Forget electricity prices. Forget all those discussions. Today. Food. Yeah. Mm. Um, let, 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 yeah. okay. let the government respond. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, City. And I have to say that th this uh, this show is very engaging because uh, the people we are engaging with would qualify also to be panelists because they are very deep in the issues we are discussing. Um, the long term or medium term solutions that I gave when they materialize they need to get Kenya still alive mm. because we are doing it for people who are here and about yeah in the mid in the short term for us to make sure that everyone can survive mm. beyond the irrigation projects i talked about beyond the inputs 
you remember maize and all the other crops have a season mm. and a season is a matter of months not days in the meantime we are doing something called drought mitigation mm -hmm. and what we have decided to do as a government is that whereas we have many benevolent people out there who are willing to assist us whereas we have friends out there who are willing to lend a helping hand it is the obligation of the government to make sure that we do whatever we do we must do within the resources that we have <coughs> to keep the people who are very affected uh, uh, still having food mm -hmm. and therefore what you have done is to allocate money as a government in the budget for drought mitigation that is short term so that because what we see you know uh, eric and muga we are dealing with two things here there are things that are short term in nature what they need are interventions the things that are long term in nature what they need are policies in terms of interventions we are putting money to purchase food from within and without so that we can be able to feed people as we wait for the results of the medium and long term plans mm -hmm. beyond that we have done something else as government we have told the traders of kenya to apply through afa which they have done mm -hmm. and we have given licenses to import duty free uh, maize duty free rice and some uh, little bit of sugar so that even as we wait for the crop to materialize we at least have supplies to feed our people within the intervening months and if you permit a uh, uh, city allow me because as sure we come so that we also don't disinform people and uh, all of us here may give facts that are not necessarily very correct i listened to uh, the former governor talked about comparative nature of economics and he gave statistics about inflation but he scattered around and i'm sure you may not have the audacity to tell him that but i can he never answered any question that was asked by ratif i laid down the policies that we are uh, undertaking and our action plans eric you try to dig deeper on what is wrong with what we are doing the only thing i had wrong with the governor is that it is an old thing and i agree mm. a country is led by the person on the steering wheel that is why we have had many policies before we have had many pronouncements before but may majority of them have not worked okay. but then <clears throat> the person on the steering wheel is the person who determines whether even if it's an old policy or an ill policy whether it's going to work this is already working let me ask you fertilizer something. has yeah. never reached specific farmers in the country ever it is now doing that yes I, I, I do. even as we look at this even if you so if even as you give a formula if you, as you give a recipe for something yeah. another another factor that is extremely important is yes, time yes, it I doesn't do. matter yes. you're going to put a seed of maize in the ground yeah. a farmer will tell you three to six months this thing will give us grain yeah you put a cake in the oven mm. the cook will tell you 45 minutes we get a cake yeah. and i think this is the thing that people are asking to know yes, yes. because time was preferred upon this thing mm. when the president came into place and he said mm. and those famous words unfortunately are etched in the memories of many people mm. by the time i put the bible down this and this, and this, and this, and this, and this will happen yeah. so you cannot take away that from the minds of people yes as time goes people are getting a lot more nervous and they're saying mm. you know what it's becoming harder the time is getting shorter mm. can you prescribe the element of time to this thing give us okay. time okay how much time do you need okay. we need to see these things happening kenyans are hungry today mm. the situation in the health sector is bad today education is a problem still till today mm. you know mm. so all these things and they're saying give time the question is how much time <laughs> you know can it be is it something that you can actually prescribe or you need to say actually we can't say how long but we uh, just need time uh, thank you Ndu. Uh, some of the issues we are dealing with as you have rightly put it can't wait for tomorrow no nope. and that is why i was trying to explain there before and especially in matters of food mm -hmm. because uh, a hungry man is an angry man is an angry man and an angry man cannot be productive mm -hmm. and we are looking at kenyans as human beings but also is a valuable resource for our country mm -hmm. and that is why even as we do things that will bear fruit in the medium and long term i've explained that you are putting money to be able to feed our people in the intervening period secondly we have actually allocated kenya shillings to billion to be able to feed the children in areas that are in dire need of food when they go to school so that we have even uh, uh we, we we have a uh, um, double-pronged approach 
so that we have people in school that is education but also we have them uh, fed so all i'm trying to say is the, uh, that we have put in enough resources to be able to uh, uh, to to check the matter mm -hmm. in the intervening period but i was in the process of demystifying some of the issues that the governor was unable to respond to he was asked i've talked about delegation i've talked about fertilizer i've talked about uh, eddie boyle i've talked about what we are doing on the physical side he never answered one question he blabbered around then we went to tanzania governor tanzania is not in kenya whatever is happening in tanzania is their policies what i gave is our policies please respond to the policies as a kenyan because i gave them and governor an opposition always even when we were in opposition in quotes you must sharpen yourself mm. you have to package yourself as a government in waiting you cannot come to a show the government is laying down their policies and you have none then you are going for namadamano for what that is the kind of solutions that kenyans are looking uh, up to in terms of us as and leaders be before but be before the director comes in to respond to that i want to add a couple of questions to you so you've talked about in the supplementary budget you have put in money for relief food to cater for people who are right now affected by droughts and hunger you have uh, allowed duty-free importation of maize rice sugar and other commodities you have put in two billion shillings for school feeding program those are the things that you said the immediate the now so for food relief how many people today are receiving food relief from government today do you actually have that <coughs> figure on the ground because we saw members of parliament from these asal areas two weeks ago addressing the issue of food and not, not being able to distribute food to their people the issue of duty-free imports the duty-free importation the deputy president himself has said in fact now we are stuck because there's no maize in the market we are looking at how we can allow the maize millers to go into the market to buy maize that is not available in the market and all those questions the promise was by the minister for agriculture that by february would have maize rice and sugar already in the country and the prices of these commodities will be dropping we are in mid-march those prices have not come down we have not seen progress on the importation of these commodities what gives i go yes mm -hmm. uh eric uh, the issue about the beneficiaries uh, uh, the beneficiaries of ready food the background is that we are facing a famine and a drought that is unprecedented for the last 40 years however the approach we have seen in government is also unprecedented in terms of scale and size we have never seen the kind of government intervention we are doing this we are, we are seeing this time and remember previously what the governments have done is to fundraise yes we have done a little bit of that but i can assure you over 95 percent of the resources that we are appropriating in terms of short-term drought mitigation is government money is kenya's money so i may not have the figures in terms of the numbers of the beneficiaries but in terms of the grad in terms of the budget we have allocated like in the supplementary budget alone the money we put in there to be spent in the coming months is over seven billion kenya shillings so that we are able to support kenyans who are in dire need of that support but also as we do that we are not uh, uh, we are not just doing that in terms of being the long-term uh, plan that we have we are doing that in this current period in the current months that can't wait but also we have also allocated money so that we do not find ourselves in the kind of situation we are in in terms of the long and a, and a medium term mm -hmm. secondly we have allocated and i said we have covered uh, two billion kenya shillings for feeding program for sec primary going children in the very affected areas this one we are covering all the asals counties and other pockets of poverty within well-to-do counties that one is ongoing is an ongoing project we just beefed up uh, the budget the other one was in terms of uh, supply chain disruptions in uh, maize you know eric one thing i have seen and i really appreciate kenyans is that there is no kenyan that lives in the moon and comes in the morning to 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 do their business and then goes back to to the moon including us leaders kenyans are very very understanding mm. they are understanding to the fact that we know for sure 
maize come from farms. I've been able to scatter out where do maize come from. If you go to areas, for example, like Zimbabwe, and by the way, I want to correct the governor, the inflation in Zimbabwe is no longer in the, in the, in the triple digits. Yet it's high around 92%, but it is lower than the two that, that you gave because they have been able, uh, in terms of the Arab blood, they have been able to produce enough food through that uh, element of inflation that is uh, food-led. So what I want to try to say, areas that we usually get maize from, some of these areas are also struggling to feed their own people. There is a global shortage in terms of maize. What the government did is to give permits for people to import. The truth of the matter is that majority of these people are still holding on to permits, but they have not been able to find source. But there is good news on the other side. As there are constrained supply chains in terms of maize because of scarcity, then there is abundance of rice. Majority of the people who we are given permit to import rice, most of them have been able to bring rice to the country. And if you check the prices of rice, they are reasonable. But we must not get lost in this Urabalu to the fact that the cost of unga has actually clamped down. It is marginal, yes. It is marginal. It is not desirable. But at least it has come down. And that coming down, though marginal, gives every Kenyan hope, including myself, mm -hmm. that clearly the cost of unga will continue climbing down. Sounds and especially like you're saying, when it sounds like you're saying that because of government interventions, because that's what you call them, the food prices are bearable. The cost of living is bearable. Is that what you're saying, Mishmo? What I'm trying to say is that the government, we are alive to the conditions that our country is in. Okay. And what Kenyans are going through. There's no maize. There's we have abundance done. of rice. There's all these things. Is the cost of food bearable that's the bottom line like city was saying won't we eat today whether you tell us that people are holding on to permits to import whether they say they you know the price of rice is now okay or it's okay is it okay that everybody we previously had the mp for Dagoret, uh, for embakasi north here telling us the people dandora people of dandora are just like everybody else they cannot afford to buy food so all those things that you say in Weshimiwa, are the people actually feeling that the cost of food is being addressed by the government are they feeling it not what you're doing in parliament mm. can i just add something to what you're okay. saying yeah kiaru where you come from is one of the places in this country which has more rivers than they know what to do with plenty of rivers mm. really one could ask okay Mishimua, <coughs> the water that's available i'm certain is being put to good use but do you have people in kiharu who need food support who need to be fed um, City, thank you very much, and Latif. Uh, because when we come to such shows, it's we are also informing Kenyans mm -hmm. and exchanging ideas for the betterment of our country. There are some issues, and I start with the city in terms of Kiharu. Some of these counties that are deemed to be well to do also have pockets of people that need support. The kind of situation which is nature driven that we are facing the currently drought and famine it knows no color it knows no language it knows no family it cuts across and therefore some of the people who have previously been able to fed of themselves from their farms have not been able to do that mm -hmm. purposely because of how nature has treated us what are we doing in terms of kiharu answering city directly is that you may have heard about a program we have in kiharu called kiharu masomabora program where we put in government money, CDF money, we restructured how bursaries operate. We come up with we came up with a product where the day scholars are only paying a thousand. How am I answering this question? Is that now these students are able to eat in school from Monday to Saturday? It is yes a policy, but also round up as an intervention. Mm. That tells you, yes, there are people that need support, and you are doing whatever we should to do that. Mm -hmm. In terms of Ratif. Are Kenyans feeling? Are we comfortable with the current situation? Hmm. If we were comfortable, we would be doing nothing about it. Okay. The fact that we are doing a lot about it, it means there is room for improvement in terms of food prices, in terms of supply chains, and basically, we are not sleeping doing that job. Or it could also mean that you would, as let's say Parliament, for example, raise voices when it comes to things like, you know, 50 
chief administ uh, administrative um, secretaries being brought into government when the initial response was for 23. And you could say, you know what, this would affect the wage bill significantly. And here we are saying that Kenyans are suffering. There's extra money that could be mopped up to do something else. Maybe if we heard things like that, if we heard things like that, then people would be more convinced that there was concern or that the government of the day was not tone deaf to some of these issues. But we don't. So that could be another issue, right? Even as you think about that. Uh, Thank you. I want to ask you as well. <laughs> I look at mass actions on the continent that have yielded something. And... I mean, many, many come to mind. If we want to look at Egypt and part of the Arab Spring, if we look at shutdown in Namibia when women and men went into the streets of Windhoek and said, look, we cannot accept this sexual violence anymore, and it led to policy change. Today we see in Parliament, in Namibia, certain things have happened as a result, direct result of that mass action. Mm -hmm. I think of Nigeria and I think of NSARS. Young people did not leave the streets until the government of the day said, you know what, we're actually going to get rid of this rogue police unit and, you know, do something else with it. Whether or not the same police officers were brought into another unit, but we saw response, right? Many, many other examples that we could call up from around the world. In this case, with what would happen today in Kenya, <coughs> what would be the direct result of this mass action today? What is the hope that would happen as a result of people, you know, going and protesting silently, peacefully or otherwise, what can we say that it would actually yield something? And then we would say, actually, you know what, if, if these prices of food that are so high, if people need something to eat today, and we're saying, okay, mass action would then equate to these things actually being done. And maybe we would say, absolutely, I doff my hat, go ahead. Can we see that that would happen as a result of this? Um, first of all, the answer is yes, mm. and, and let me expound a bit. Um, you know, citizens globally have an innate right to be able to express themselves um, about what is going on, about performance of their government. Absolutely. Um, it is clear Kenyan citizens are not happy with the performance of this government. Um, the food, importing food, and, and you know, uh, we should, if we don't have, we have to import. But remember, this food, you are paying for it uh, most likely in dollars. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, shilling to the dollar, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in just two years, um, we, we are at, uh, from 100 to 145 now. So that whatever you are buying is probably 40% more expensive mm. than, say, a couple of years ago. If you look just in the last... Uh, six, seven, uh, five, six months or so, the shilling has dropped from 117 to nearly 150 now. So that those food imports are all the more Expensive. dearer yeah. because uh, of the inability of this government to deal with uh, or to control uh, exchange. Now, of course, you can say um, time, which is what they have asked for, but I want to take the example of the UK. The other day, a British Prime Minister was voted uh, and she lasted on the job a month, a month and a half. Mm. What really went wrong? The minister, I mean, the, the, the British Prime Minister, her finance minister announced a policy that the markets reacted very negatively to. Mm -hmm. And it led to the depreciation of the pound. By what percent? 1.8%. Mm, not even 2%. One yeah. point. 1.8%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was enough for Parliament in the UK to say, look, we do not support you any further and for the Prime Minister to resign mm. because her economic policy is not working. And here we, we are talking about moving uh, from 117 shillings to the dollar to nearly now in the market. 150. 150 mm. to the dollar. But I want to go back uh, to this accusation uh, leveled on me that I didn't tell you what is wrong with what government is doing now and what should be done. Okay? I'll start again where I started. Government is the one that creates inflation expectations by setting a legal 
target. Government should revise it from 7.5% to 0%. Secondly, government has said they want to focus on supply side, meaning production. Mm. But Mweshimua and all of us here have re uh, repeatedly said, if we don't survive today, then those long-term solutions are meaningless. So we must support the consumption side today, to which uh, government is saying, that is why we are providing for duty-free import of food. Yep. And that is fine, except you must do it in a transparent and open manner. Because we know our history as Kenya, mm. that this importation of food, importation of fertilizer, has often been the source of corruption. Now, a big question being asked of government now. You have chosen, for example, Kenya National Trading Corporation, which is a government entity. Yeah. Okay. Why is it that you're not letting, not just that entity, but open it up so that it is competitive? Because competition generally has the effect of uh, moderating or bringing down prices. So that's what they could do better. Yes, let, we must import food because we don't have enough. Mm. But you must do it in a manner that is not creating additional uh, 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 corruption. You must be willing to do some short-term support on the consumption side because people need to survive today. Now, 3.6 trillion, 3.6 trillion. So the budget is not, uh, as a global figure, the total budget is not declining. Mm. What we must then ask, where, what are we prioritizing? And we believe ourselves that even as government says they want to do some long-term supply-side things, support domestic, I mean, support some short-term consumption subsidies so that people are able to survive uh, uh, today. So you want, one, a, like, an UNGA subsidy? Uh, not just UNGA subsidy, it is fuel, it is all the things that go into, f into, consumption. into consumption and into, you know, uh, pushing higher. Uh, the cost of living. But the number one thing government must do, if it is serious, is actually reset the inflation expectations. Then mm. this importation of food, open it up so that uh, it, is, it is transparent. Then um, uh, 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 bring back mm. some uh, consumption, uh, short-term consumption subsidies, for example, on fuel. Because, yes, we don't produce oil. We have to import it. But we are importing it at a depreciating sharing. Finally, government has to restore confidence in the markets so that, uh, you know, we are not looking at 180 shillings uh, to, to, the uh, dollar. to the dollar. Let's take a break. Now, back to now. Uh, Let's take a break and then you come and respond yeah. to the question. If people go onto the streets today, does it translate to what should years? they expect at the end of the day today? By yeah. midday today, okay, so sour, what will major Nairobi was streets? Yes. And then you'll answer that. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. People go to the streets today. Mm -hmm. What are the deliverables? What is it that we expect to tick the box at the end of the day? Um, mass action globally and mm -hmm. in, in citizens uh, stepping out to voice. And I'll go back to what uh, the city raised a few minutes ago. I mean, they are saying something. Now, if government... Um, uh, exercises wisdom, they will ask themselves, what are these citizens saying? What is it that is making Kenyans angry mm. that they are out on the street? Um, if government is minded, government will stop um, giving us excuses. Um, and, and government has this habit of saying, oh, Nerito and you people, you are in power, you stole, you did that. I mean, if, if government has any evidence of wrongdoing, people should be charged in a court of law. That's what courts are for. I mean, but we cannot have the highest and, and, and I mean, the totality of government, the mm -hmm. frontline leadership of government, all we hear day in, day out is that things were bad in the past, the people who were there in the past did this or they did that. Well, enough is enough. You are sitting in a position right now, mm. so solve it. So, and that is what Kenyans are saying. Okay. Now, Kenyans are saying we don't trust 
this program you are saying that you have a program to solve our problems mm. kenyans are saying we are not really seeing we are not experiencing a reduction in the cost of living mm-hmm. if anything it is going up okay kenyans are saying the shilling has tanked and we are not seeing any credible work by government to restore sanity in the exchange market mm-hmm. kenyans are saying we are tired of you of blame game and if anybody has gone outside the law they should be prosecuted we should not uh, you know we don't want to hear what we what we should be seeing is people being taken to court now is not just in kenya today in south africa they want malema Oh, not Malema, the, the president. The, the one the president has. Cyril Ramaphosa. Cyril Ramaphosa, yes. Cyril Ramaphosa. In Nigeria, Out. they are also on the... In yes. Tunisia. Mm. And who raised... I mean, Tunisia was, uh, a few years ago, the the spark of the Arab Spring. Again, what were people talking about that time? Cost of living, dictatorial regimes, and saying, look, you're not doing your job, um, and, and we no longer have confidence in you. And I... Just give the example I know my colleague doesn't like examples. I just give you the example of what happened in the UK mm. just 2 3 months ago. And we as a as a nation a lot of stuff we do the way government is run is in fact borrowed from the UK. Okay. Yeah. So, so what is it that the leaders of this today's protests are demanding? What are they demanding? Are they saying that this government should resign in mass? Is it the executive to resign? Is it the president and the deputy to resign? to vacate office we have a snap election are they saying that parliament has failed and so all members of parliament 290 plus 47 plus 12 go home and we have new elect what exactly are they saying <laughs> they are saying exactly this your time is up you you are not delivering for kenyans kenyans have no longer have confidence in you that's what they're saying so go home and go home who? and and what that the the uh, and and we we can go back through the issues cost of living but who the, who has failed the well, government the president his the executive the executive has failed so president and his cabinet go home yes because remember it is the president and his cabinet mm. that is who uh, when we say government is them is them but mushimwa there's something that uh, mushimwa didn't you raised which we we must in my view address mm-hmm. if you present yourself as the opposition remember this government when they were campaigning presented themselves as the opposition and they made promises mm-hmm. those who were then gunning for the same seat also made promises right now we are saying this government is not doing what they should do what does the azimio government in waiting propose to do better we need to hear alongside going yep. we will do this differently if these guys will, go home tomorrow we will to set this straight in 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 TV. <laughs> we will set <laughs> no, yeah, we will set <laughs> this straight <laughs> the price of unga will do the other yes. wheat will now do a tumble turn it will rain uh, maize w- yes will rain I mean, in fact it, it, yes it is <laughs> first of all first of all it, uh, you know and no no serious leaders should make false promises so you should not promise that is going to rain maize because it's not going to rain maize what you can do is be honest now what would we do differently you should uh, that's what we have been expecting to hear yes and these have, guys have, are all this thing we've said i have i have repeatedly said so i will say again the number one thing we'll do tomorrow would be to remove that inflation expectation that is created by government and i explain how it creates it once it sets a target everybody else in the economy uses that target Which so that's know, number one. this thing is number not two. any different from the promises this government is making number because two. what you're saying mm-hmm. it'll happen in the future no, is no, it no. not so no 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 yes if you if no. that rate is if, set if, today if you set the rate are today are you saying there'll be changes tomorrow no what, what i'm saying is that all uh, contractual conversations or wage negotiations or pricing decisions in the future will see will mm. yeah so, number two so where's the difference two, between you and this current two, government number two we in importing food yes make it 
a transparent process that is less prone to corruption number 3 number 3 reorient budget today so that you in the short term support the consumption side even as you wait for fertilizer mm. to take effect and for maize to grow so in five put months an unga subsidy. put an unga subsidy today with put which, a fuel subsidy today with which yeah. money okay. can i where, where, this this three point, the budget can i th- th- this 3.6 trillion mm. this th- th- 3.6 trillion is it not a budget it city is. yeah so city. you can I, so okay. yeah fine can, so, I uh, 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 can i finish can i finish yes please yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah which we fair is fair. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes. Very good. Mm. This six, uh, 3.6 trillion budget is what needs to be reoriented to ensure that Kenyans what are would you cut? Um, mm. What would you reduce? Oh, plenty of things. Number one. Let me start where our colleague has said. Mm. We don't need 50 assistant ministers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we actually don't need no, <coughs> assistant that ministers number. at all. So I, w- I would start on the wage bill number one number two i would reset the interest regime remember as we explained um, almost an hour ago we see here that once you set this high target of inflation it forces you to set a very high level of interest rate mm-hmm. so the bank rate today the central bank rate is around nine percent which means government is paying for its debt at that level and it doesn't need to be so what would we do differently? We would reset the interest rate regime lower so that our own borrowing is at a lower price. What else would we do? We would lengthen the maturity of, okay. of government debt today so that we are borrowing more long term at lower interest rates. What would we do different city? You know, you know I, I, I'm nodding. You're an economist, and what you're saying falls into the realm of wonderful economic theory, things which, if implemented, certain outcomes would be there. I wish the two of you would address the one elephant that dogs everything we are saying. Everything you're saying, Mishimiwa, can happen, and it it can actually happen if the will is there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We lose 2.79 billion daily. 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 On? Corruption. Indeed. As Mio doesn't have a clear plan of how they're going to deal with it. Kenya Kwanza Kwanza said that's not their priority. Now, and it is the problem because every time we have this discussion with budget, supplementary budget, money that has gone out, it isn't just this government or the previous one, even the one before it had this problem. Money is budgeted for, it goes elsewhere instead of where it should go. Now, Surely, if we don't address this, even with the best laid plans of men and mice, will we have a situation where we will actually see the light of day? Um, ultimately, Kenya does have to slay. We have to slay the corruption dragon. And you can't help but see that many decisions being made today seem driven by other i mean take the example of this uh, uh, scandal in the offing about tractors from some place called belarus and, and you wonder what really is driving this decision yeah it doesn't make seem to make economic sense you know or to respond we, you know to the issue we, we don't want to go there much more it's because we can point to similar things in the government that you're in and there's not there's nothing yeah. to address them yes the, 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 yeah, to this, uh, uh, just a final point yes. on what is required is the will Yes. The question is, um, do current leaders have the will to deal with the question of corruption? When we have succeeded a little bit, and I wouldn't say we succeeded a lot, a little bit, Mm. it is because the CEO of the day would not countenance, would not protect people who are accused of corruption. That is how you saw legendary figures who are leaders in Kibaki government, like Murungaru, like Muraria, and other leaders who are very senior. And close to him. And close to him, and they had to leave because of being uh, mentioned in, the, in terms of corruption. Unless we can get to that level of commitment, corruption uh, is going nowhere. Is going nowhere. Dende. Uh, Eric, uh, I want to be direct to the point because I see our time is almost up. 
you asked the question about madamano then what i was waiting to hear the answer mm. uh, we still have time maybe it will be forthcoming he has said you once you go home i mean uh, from from the reader of Mandamano who mm. is now in the studio mm. now he talked about he wants ruto and uh, kashagua yes home, and his so ministers and his i had to go home, home. In, in in fact i'm responding to that okay mm. uh, he talked about promises mm. that uh, people must keep promises and i agree with him precisely mm. the leader who he was chairman for promised kenyans that this time round when the vote is cast and he loses especially when he had the deep state especially when he had the president who is uh, sitting that he will accede to the will of the people and go home instead of going home he's now in the streets please start by keeping that promise second you asked about then what do you do differently you know eric that is the problem of having a good person like uh, on uh, governor derito in a place where he is totally clueless on what happens because <laughs> If you listened to the policies he's purporting he would do, then you have nothing to do. Call off the demonstration. Because number one, he talked about making imports. The import of food and uh, in terms of maize, rice, and sugar. Transparent. And I want to correct him. Unless maybe he jetted back to the country today. What KNTC is doing is different from the, the, the permits that we are given to other traders and millers uh, two months ago. Kenyans already have these permits. It's not being done by government. It was an open process that everyone got. And you know the beauty about the current administration, you read on the newspapers. Even your boss here is doing a power station. We are not looking at their political inclinations. If they're adding value to the economy, we go with it. Okay. so we go with it. Mm -hmm. If, for example, you look at Shabal of Mombasa, you saw him the other day in terms of the housing project. He's one of the people actually doing the housing program. The point I'm driving home is that we never discriminated anyone in terms of giving the permits to import food. And therefore, you have no job to do there. The second job you did, or, or you, you purported to do, is to reorient the budget, ostensibly to attack the consumption side of subsidy. Governor, you were the chairman of Azimio Jubilee all combined. Last year, you did the same thing. Only I don't want to say who, who does the same thing over and over, expecting different results. I don't want to say who because it may de be deemed as an insult. Mm. You tried food subsidy in the consumption side. You are, your people gobbled up for billion. Nothing is forthcoming. He talked about fuel subsidy, that they will come and now give fuel subsidy. You tried that last year, Governor. In fact, let me just uh, bring you to speed. For the last two years, you are, the government, you were chairman for Azimio and the Jubilee, they spent 141 billion Kenya shillings, ostensibly subsidizing oil and fuel products. What is the outcome? The fuel prices are the same today. There is no subsidy as it was then. You will come with other jargons, but that is the reality. Number is the three, subsidy gone? Mm. Is we are not, the subsidy we are no longer giving. What you are giving is arrears. You know, there are people who had been that's all right okay. let, let me tr can i finish finish yes the other issues that uh, he talked about i was listening kenyans are speaking kenyans are going to the street to speak mm -hmm. you, you know you want to throw this government out you and who that the is kenyans. the point because kenyans spoke in the legal manner they speak in august and the legal manner they speak in terms of installing a leader and discarding a leader it's through the ballot. And the same people, you know, they speak with the same mouth, different things. One, they come to purport, we are in a jacket and suits. We are defenders of the constitution. We are Puritans, uh, constitutional Puritans. We are this kind of people. The same pharaohs, they go and church. They come with the, with the battalion clothing. Then they say, no, 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 no. We do not recognize any institution. No, 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 no. IBC, you don't recognize it. Governor, at least tell your leaders to be a bit consistent so that then Kenyans can believe them. And if Madamano is so good as it is, Governor, you'll not be here in the studio. You'd be in Madamano. And especially with the people closest to you, because as you purport, it is a very good thing to do. That, let me tell you, Governor, and hear me clearly. 
The only reason you are going for Madamano or the leader for Madamano, Muse, is calling for Madamano. It's not for the many reasons you purported to give but never did. It is for one reason. To be called in a place like this in a boardroom, is that the case? I can tell you Would there you is, you is no better way to judge the future. Is that the case? Ndu. Of course, Ndu. Not, it, of uh, course governor, it is not. Hold your cool. Hold your cool. Of course, it is hold not. Hold your cool. I'm it is my time. Question that I've been asked. Finish, you, no finish, one finish, asked you any finish. question. We have a minute. No one asked you any question. question. And there's no reason to be insultful. The only reason. Yeah. I mean, I'm not you so, anyone. You, so you know, guys, man, man, when we speak the truth, okay. you say we are insulting you. Peace. 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 No Let me tell he you. He has broken your goat's leg. Yes. Leg. Don't Can you just don't kill his lab? Let me just finish. Finish. The only reason he's calling for Madamano, mm. and there is no better way of judging the future but by the past, is that judging by the past, when the roaf of bread he's given even two slices, then the prices of food are good. The cost of everything is good. Kenyans are happy. Just because you are happy and you are keen by appointing them in various uh, positions doesn't mean you have fulfilled anything. Therefore, I want to, to put it plainly. Uh -huh. This time round, and they hear me clearly, you are dealing with a different president. You have blackmailed Kenyans for too long. This time, there is no more people to blackmail. I want to ask you we a question are not related acceding. to that as we, con as we conclude. Final question. If we have 10 Kenyans, 20, 15, 200, that come out to the streets today in response to the call for protests, are you willing to listen to them? Latif, there is no government that is op is, has, has been open as the current administration. Anyone with the, any idea, we are always a Masinani government. All of us, leaders in MP's position, the president himself, open door policy. And therefore, anyone with an opinion has always been had. That is why even the people from opposition, the former colleagues of uh, the governor, they are coming and we are listening to them. Are and whatever really opinions they have, mm. we are inputting <laughs> them in our really policies. Listen. Are you really listening? We are yeah. listening. We but I wanted to make this point clear. Final point. You have blackmailed Kenyans for too long, Muzay Tinga, and your battalion. This time you are dealing with a different cadre of people. We are not going to be blackmailed. There is no Mkate Nusu. There is nothing. You will add a mana, you will go nowhere. But you are not acceding to selfish demands. Yeah, the, 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 first of all, we've, we've, first of all we've, 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 we've come to the end. As we <laughs> close. We, we've the, come to the end. We actually have five seconds. There is no reason for Kenyans to insult one another. Ooh. Those Kenyans who are going on the street they should they will do so and will do so peacefully there's no reason for the government side to get scared or insult us thank you very much for joining us today